Well, this video is going to concern itself with the restoration and repair of the velvet on this little fellow's antlers. I decided to make this a separate video for the simple reason that this is going to, this is going to involve a whole different series of techniques and a, a whole other process. I also decided that this would be a good opportunity for those of you who want to learn how to do, how to create velvet antlers on a regular rack. I will demonstrate just for you. Um, I'm going to take this little set of antlers, not a big set of antlers, but it's, it's enough that we can create a convincing set of uh, a, a velvet coating on this set to make a, to make a, a respectable set of velvet antlers. Um, it's, it's like I say, it's a whole different technique, a whole different system. Um, a lot of you probably have never seen it before. I've never tried it on antlers before. This is a product that I use on miniature dioramas, my model railroading. Uh, so it's, it's something that I'm familiar with and uh, something I'd like to share with those of you that are not familiar with it. So, as always, sit back and enjoy my video. What I've got here are some various flocking materials. Now, these have been purchased from um, various suppliers. The Nach brand here, along with the Hecke brand, uh, were purchased from uh, a company called Scenic Express. And they supply a lot of uh, uh, scenic, scenic materials and, and building supplies for model railroads, uh, miniature dioramas, and the like. Uh, this little container here I bought uh, from online Walmart. Okay. This is real short. It's a good color, but it's very, very short stuff. This one here is from a UK company called Serious Play, UK.com. Uh, this is a uh, dead winter grass, and it is six millimeter in length. Six millimeter in length. This is dry country spring grass, also six millimeter in length. Uh, this is a nice brown shade. I'll probably be incorporating this into the Velveteen Deer's antlers. Uh, the Nach um, six millimeter beige that I originally purchased, I was going to use on him. I've decided against because it's just a little too short. Put that off to the side. I've been able to purchase through Scenic Express the Nach 12 millimeter length in beige. Now, this is darker than the shorter beige. Um, that might be because it has the longer fibers. I'm not sure. Uh, this is Hecky. And this is 10 millimeter uh, grass, kind of a uh, burnt grass color, uh, which will have its application, uh, it'll have its use in application on this deer. You see how long the fibers are, because as seen in the, uh, the velvet directional uh, photos, he's very, very hairy. His, his velvet is very, very hairy. Um, now onto the applicator. Now this big intimidating looking thing is the Nach Grassmaster 2.0. This is the applicator for the static grass or the static fibers. It is battery operated and the way it's used is the wire with the metal clip is touched or you could you could clip it onto a t-pin touch the t-pin down to the subject that's about to have the flocking applied the flocking is put into this container into this holder this is a finer screen this is used for the uh, this size screen here is used for uh, the size flocking I'm going to use here 
and it is then just simply with metal contact it is shaken onto the surface and it will allow the flocking to build up a static charge within the container and the metal ensures that it will stand on end. Now when you're creating grass for a model layout or a diorama, a miniature diorama, you want the grass to stand up. It can also be tipped over slightly to look like it's windblown, especially the longer grass. On the antlers, it will be laid down where it needs to be laid down so that it's not sticking straight up. Okay, we're not looking to create a velvet porcupine here. Um, like I said, it's battery operated, operates on a 9 volt battery. which is contained herein. It's not been hooked. It, when I'm not using it, I, I disconnect it from its, um, its little interior connections. Now let's get this a little closer. Here we go. It's a simple 9-volt connection, simple 9-volt battery. And it works great. It really does. And you'll see that as we continue. The Nach Grassmaster 2.0 comes with three various sizes of screen covers. The smallest one here is used for one, one and a half, 2.5 millimeter length grass. That's what I used with the Hecky uh, brown grass on the skull the antler of the skull. This medium size here is a good size for, let me get it focused, there we go. This is a good size for six millimeter and uh, six to eight millimeter length flocking. And this beast here, <laughs> this is good for the 10 to and, and 12 millimeter. There, there, nothing comes any longer than 12 and it's kind of tough to find even uh, 12 from some other companies. But uh, I'll be incorporating the medium and the large for this deer because I'll, I'll be using this to apply the 6 millimeter rayon flocking. An accessory for the Knock Grassmaster is the directional funnel or tube, I guess you'd say. Uh, this is used in place of the screen uh, tops. Now, it comes with an arrangement, a plate that goes inside that has smaller holes for smaller size um, flocking filaments and another with multiple, many more holes. And this is what you could use for the larger grass. Now, in experimenting with this, I found that if you get too close to the subject, this will tend, because this is plastic, because the nozzle is plastic, it builds up its own static charge. So what happens is the grass comes out in a uh, kind of like, in a, it looks like a rope of the glass, of the grass. And you can run this over. This is really meant for smaller areas like uh, if you want to make little grass uh, when you're working on uh, dioramas or model railroad, if you want to use this to make little grass uh, sprouts, that's what this is good for. Otherwise, uh, this probably won't be used for the antlers. As can be seen on the inside of the hopper of the Grassmaster 2.0, that little metal at the bottom is what produces the electrical charge that allows the rayon flocking to stand on end. This is the Vallejo brand um, airbrush paint. This is sand, U.S. sand color. This is made for airbrushes. The number is 71.112. This will be utilized in cases where the color of the flocking doesn't match itself or 
the color of the antlers per se, this will even everything out. And what I have in this container are various uh, brushes which will aid in the application of the flocking. After it's applied and after it's allowed to set up a bit, I can use these soft makeup brushes to help direct the other uh, lay of the velvet that's going on the deer's antlers. Okay, uh, the glue for the flocking is simply a base of Mod Podge. And into that, I'm going to add a little dry tempera. Now, the Mod Podge will dry clear. Okay, so there's not a problem with that. Now, I've poured out, oh, pretty close to two ounces of Mod Podge. And into that, I'm going to add a little dry tempera just to give the lightened antlers a bit of a base color, a base color. Now dry tempera doesn't interfere with the drying of the Mod Podge. It will allow it to dry to a brown color. And if you use very little, you have an antler color. Okay? There's an antler color. I'm going to stir this until it's thoroughly dissolved. We're going to start applying the glue I'm now to the going, I'm now going to load the Knock Grassmaster 2.0. I'm going to load some grass into the hopper, and I'm using, for this deer, I'm using the Hecky winter grass. It's a little darker brown. I just empty it into, empty it into the hopper here. And it goes in, and it's very, very, very lumpy, as you can see. So I want to get in there with a shtick and just break it up a little bit. Just break it up. So that it's not as lumpy. This way it comes out cleaner. Now I put the screen back in place. Now the battery's already been connected, and you can tell your battery is connected when you flip the switch. and the little red light turns on. In the meantime, I'm going to lay that down, bring the skull over, and we're going to start applying the brown glue to the antlers. A little section at a time. Now this, it has, the glue has not been thinned. It has been pre-colored, but has not been thinned. Now, there, there's no noise, there's no hum or buzz that comes off of the Grassmaster. It sets up an electrical charge within the hopper. There's, an, there's a, a little wire sticking down into the hopper. And that is what charges the fiber particles. Now, I'm doing this over a piece of paper. so that I can put the excess flocking back into the container. I'll wipe up that little drop. I don't want that drop hooking on to anything. All right, now you can attach a pin to the subject or you can hook this alligator clip right on to the end of the antler. Okay, now here we go. Now there's no noise with this, like I said. I'll, I may do some sound effects for you, but that's about it. It's turned on. And it's slightly shaken. And as it's shaken, the, the fibers, the hairs, I guess you could call them, actually stand up. Whoops! The clip must stay in place. Now shut it off before you handle the clip. And you can see the flocking actually standing on end. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, just look at this tip.
And that's what we want. I'm going to circle all around the antler wherever the glue was applied. Okay. The switch is on. I can tell because the light is on. And you can see how it's creating what looks like a velvet coat. All right, the alligator clip just let go. But you can see what we've got here now. Now we're going to knock this. the excess off the skull. It will come off where there's no glue and will stay wherever the glue made contact. Now we have the outside to do here, right here, right here. And I'm going to get that next. Now here goes. The now I'm just tapping against the side of the container. And applying the flocking as we go. Oops. That clip keeps I'm slipping now applying on me. more of the tinted glue. I'm going to add a little more down here where it's already been applied, but I want to add a little more glue. I want this to be a little thicker. And I'm going to show how we can even get the tips looking a little thicker. Now this is a small set of antlers. Right, there's, no, there's no doubt about that. This is a small set of antlers. So this is a little easier to operate on. Yeah, got the clip way down towards the tip. You can see the clip is making contact with the tip of the antler, where it's, the antler's a little thinner. Now we're going to go ahead, going to turn on the switch. See the light comes on. And we're going to start tapping and allowing the flocking to come out and make contact. And for those of you that like sound effects, that's essentially how flocking is done, folks. Right there. Now, with a dryer brush, I just want to get this real thick. With a dry brush, let me shut that off. I can come in and I can shape. I can right now it's sticking out. With a dry brush, I can direct, I can control the direction, I should say. Of the growth, quote unquote, growth of the velvet. And this has to be done while the glue is still wet. And I don't know how well you can see that. It's actually, actually laying it down. Here we go. Let's try to get in closer. Just a gentle brushing. In fact, probably the softer the brush, I would say, the better the flocking will lay down. Now I'm going to use a softer artist brush. will lay down much, much nicer. And that's what we want. We don't want, like I said, like I said, we don't want to create a velveteen porcupine. You can direct it. The growth pattern where it belongs on the antlers. And for that you need to have your references. Okay, if you don't have references, you're not going to make it correct. One of the best references you can have is even half of a velvet antler. Keep it in your freezer. Okay, I had one for the longest time. I gave it away eventually. But I kept one in my freezer. And I would take it out from time to time. 
and C, study the growth of the velvet, which is easier to do than on a live deer. A live deer, if you touch their velvet, it's very, very, very sensitive. This active nerve ending is in there, and if you squeeze it, you'll make it bleed. But here's what we've got so far. I'm going to continue on this antler until it's complete. Then we turn to our, okay, our I've added actual more glue sun. over a spot that was a little thin. Turn on the the grass master. Oh, okay. Well, the the container is empty, so let me shut it off and scoop the remainder the remaining grass into the container. Well, I should say the, gla the grass that has fallen off onto the paper. And this is why you do this, so you can reuse it, not waste any. You will go, you'll go through this pretty quickly. So you really need to, you know, be aware of what's, what's happening. There we go. I turn the switch back on. Uh huh. Marvelous, wonderful, wonderful, and marvelous. Let's just tip this up a little bit. A little cup under there. Okay, now let's. It's built up plenty static charge. All right. Now, as you, oh, by the way, the clip was attached directly to the bone of the skull. Seems that that will create uh, and, and con continue the current. So, we take this off of here now. Knock the excess off. Start directing it where I want it. Like so. And we're getting a realistic effect. Like so. Oh, okay, I moved it a little bit. I actually moved the glue. So I'm going to take that section away. It's a nice thing. That's what you can do with this. You can take a section away. I'll put the brush in some water I have waiting here. You can reapply a little bit of the glue. Reconnect to the bone and turn on the static applicator. I'm tapping it against the unfinished antler at this point. All right, and there we go. It's covered again. So, as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process. Now, just a little recommendation. On a larger set of antlers, on a fully mature buck, where the points are real down tight and and these are still fairly blunt. This was a young deer. So these points, while not completely rounded, are still fairly blunt. Okay? On a larger rack, a more mature rack, or on a reproduction set of antlers that you want to possibly become velvet, I would strongly recommend blunting the tips. Now, that doesn't require any grinding, but what it does require is to take a little sculpting epoxy knead it together, mix it up, and just blunt the ends. Because if you look at an actual set of velvet antlers, they do not have pointy tips. Their tips are still blunt. They don't become pointed until the velvet begins to dry and the bone begins to harden, but the bone beneath it begins to harden. Uh, that's just a little tip. Uh, again, doing the research and studying references of, of velvet antlers 
you'll you'll see that for yourself. I'm going to take some more glue. I'm going to finish off the tip of this antler. Well, now knowing that the contact made further down on the skull is going to be good all around the tip, I'm going to take the glue, put it to this tip, and I'm going to finish this one side. Now as I get towards the tip of this, of the main beam, I'm going to put the glue on a little thicker. That'll just give me a little, not really a blunt end, but a bit of a blunted end. Now I turn on the mechanism. The light comes on. Light is green, trap is clean. And I'm just tapping it against the antlers on the opposite side, as you can see, to get this where I want it. I've already picked up the excess flocking off the table, off the paper, put it back into the receptacle. There we go. And this is coming out pretty darn nice. I just got to get him the rest. Nice skull. Uh-oh. Come on now. There you go, Junior. Let me take a little more off the paper. Get it into the receptacle. Receptacle. There we go. Put the cap back over, the screen back in place. Turn it on. And we shimmy, we shake. And velvet is what we make. Now, this side of the antler, I dare say, is done. This is a little sloppy, no doubt. But it's not the kind of sloppy that, oh, Oh, it's going to stain everything. No. What we've got here is a deer skull with one antler still in bone, or one antler in bone, and one antler still in velvet. Now you see how the tips, just by adding extra glue, how the tips have been blunted just a little bit. When you compare, that basically created a velvet antler on this skull. And that's how I'm going to restore and repair the velvet to our little velveteen whitetail friend here. So he's next. But for now, I'm simply going to work this over. Putting the glue on thick helps a lot during this part because it takes a while for it to dry. You need just the gentlest of touch to be able to lay these down. You want to go from the base of the antlers up toward the tip. At least that's how I have it on my reference sources, especially when the, when the velvet is long and real, real fuzzy, or I should say real hairy, not so much, not so fuzzy, but like so. It's really not even brushing so much as laying it down. You're, you're not really looking to brush along but just you're taking a brush and you're laying it down. And the reason I use the brush instead of my fingertips is the hairs of the brush are much more gentle than my fingertips. But you can see 
This is actually shaping the flocking to follow the pattern I want for the velvet. That's the main thing. Again, I don't want a velveteen porcupine. Also, if you don't like this color, you can very easily take an airbrush, use a thinned acrylic paint, and tint it after it's completely dried. You can tint the fabric. This is, like I say, rayon, rayon fabrics. So there we have it. At this point, I have the little deer on the stand tilted over to allow me access to the antlers. You also notice I have a plastic bag fixed over his head with some blue painter's tape in order to keep the excess flocking that will fall away from the antlers from falling onto the face. I have a sheet of brown paper here to catch as much of the flocking as possible. I have a piece of aluminum foil that's been folded over on itself several times and then wrapped around one of the tines on the antler. Unlike the bone, the skull, the raw bone, there's nowhere on this deer that I want to clamp the alligator clip without causing damage. And you really can't damage the bone, but you can conceivably damage the velvet, the, the actual existing natural velvet of the deer. So this will be used to take the pressure from the clamp when it is applied, like so. Now the contact will still be made throughout the entire set of antlers, right from here. Doesn't matter that we're working on the other side first, contact will be made through this secure attachment. All right, I've got the six millimeter uh, straw colored grass from the Serious Play UK in the hopper. And with it, I'm going to incorporate the medium screen. Just like so. I have 
have a mix of Mod Podge and water. Well, I guess it's about 25% water to 75% Mod Podge, maybe 50-50. I really didn't accurately measure anything. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply this to a good portion of the antler right here. Uh, I used the 12 millimeter first and that was just a little too long on this portion of the antler. So I'm going with the 6 millimeter in the straw color. And the darker color should look better. The clip is attached to the opposite antler. I'm turning the unit on. Light is on. And I'm going to have the brown paper hopefully catch it all. Medium screen, six millimeter. And here we go. Ooh. 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 I think I like it. So what am I so afraid of? Oh my goodness, look at this. Yeah, that's pretty wicked cool. Now I'm trying to get it down the side here as well. I think to do that best I'm going to need to tip the deer over just a little bit to get what I want, where I want. This over here, crook of the antler. Okay, let's turn off the turn off the grass master, and I'm going to give the deer a little twist on the head. Okay, now I'll try to catch the this portion of the antler here. And I'm just popping it up and down, hopping it up and down, and I can knock against it to get a little a little more volume. Well, I kind of like that. I think that's a good, that's a real good length right there too. Let me shut this off. Now this will need to sit for just a little while before I can add any, put any additional glue on or anything. I think I will add some flocking to this tine right here. The put some right here. Let me put some thin mod podge here. Kind of like the results. Kind of like the results I'm getting. This may stay, or I may wash it off and not try to enhance what's here. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it dries and what I've got when the time comes. This will take a little longer to dry because it's very, very diluted. Turn the switch on and let's have a little action here. Oh, nice. Oh, I like I like this. Now this product, this company, more than making more than making this product for model railroading, they make it more along the lines for uh, the little war gaming um, projects that are out there where they make dioramas and they put their little figures on the dioramas and they I guess have little war games I don't know that's something I'm that's something I'm not into so I really don't know I'll blow off some of the excess I just want to start to see if I can I'll, I'm going to let this set a bit. I actually, I think I'm going to 
roll the head form a little more on the stand to bring this part up so I can, there's glue there, I want to get some flocking on that section as well. Now this looks a little on the yellow side, especially on camera with the overhead LED lighting here, but in person it's not that yellow. Even after it's all dried, if it still looks a little bit yellow, that's what I bought the paint for. Well, I bought the paint for other things, but I'll be able to use that Vallejo sand to bring the color in line with the actual color of the deer's velvet. It is a little more yellow than the deer's velvet, but under this lighting, this looks a lot lighter in color. I mean, even the color of my fingers look pale in comparison to real life. <coughs> I want to take a really soft makeup brush and just fart around with this a little bit, so bear with me. I'm hoping this is not too soon, but it's on there really thick, so we'll see what happens. Bring this along. It's on there really super, super heavy. Let me get a smaller brush. Smaller, softer brush. Aha! Here it comes. Here it comes. This is what I'm looking for right here. This little baby right here. And lay this down a bit. I may have to wait till the glue sets up some. She's a little too fresh. She's a little too fresh. There's a lot of excess on the surface as well, which will need to be removed. Okay, I'm going to let this sit and set. Uh, I'm going to continue working on more of the antler, uh, but for now, this is just going to have to stay on its own until the glue dries enough for me to direction the flocking. All right, I'm going after this with some finger pressure. My fingers seem to be doing a better job of laying this stuff down than the brushes could at this point. It's also knocking off the very loose stuff that's on the surface. So I'm just going to play with this a little bit. If this works, it'll be great. If not, um, I know for a fact that you could spray this down with some warm water on Chemol 4. Uh, come back to it in five minutes and this will completely wipe off and clean away from the antlers. But in the meantime, I'm just going to use finger pressure. Every now and then, I may pull a stray long fiber off. Well, that's only because it's sitting atop a long velvet hair underneath. And it's just, it's making it look very sloppy. I want, I want to try and make this look neater. So I'm going to go over this. All the way around and try to direct it where I want. May puff some air on it. Just blow air on it. Little puffs of air to help direct it. And blow off the excess. Actually, the excess that's in place right now on the surface is helping me to lay down the, the flocking that's the fibers that are underneath and actually in the glue. So you see how these are laying down here, like so. That's going real nice. I say, I'm not concerned about the color. I have an acrylic paint that I know will match. I've already done a little test, so I know that the color will match. Uh, if this works, great. If not, I know that some warm water and Chemol 4 in a spray bottle applied to this soaked down real well. Uh, 
and a, a, some paper towel or even fingernail pressure can remove this stuff. So I'm not concerned about the uh, the final look. I'll do the entire rack, and if I don't like it, it's all going to come off. So far, I like what's happening here. I just have to match the di it's wild directional patterns in this hair. I'm trying to match that. If I can match that with this, it's going to look fantastic. Now I have the longer stuff I will use down the, the, the base of the antler where this is real long. Um, or I may not do anything down there. I say I, I just want to I want to restore velvet where it's As you missing. can see here where it was completely rubbed off and there's exposed dark reddish brown bone. I want to make sure that that gets covered. Like I say, I want to enhance the velvet that's on these antlers. It's laying down nice. And with the glue being clear this time, no brown will show through. See as as the as the tinted glue dried, it dried darker. That's what I wanted for the other rack. Now this has color beneath it, the color of this velvet beneath it. So when this dries, it will dry clear. Hopefully that color may come through a bit. Method to the madness, folks. Method to the madness. All right, I'm going to get the underside of this. And that's most likely going to be done off camera. I need to be able to move around this thing without the mic and being hooked up to the mic and the camera being in front of me. Hopefully you've gotten a general idea by now. <laughs> I would hope so. Okay, I have a mix of my Vallejo U.S. sand uh, with some regular rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol added, just to thin it a bit. And I'm going to start restoring color or bringing proper color to the antlers. or I might take it off. I still haven't decided yet. The airbrush I'm using is the Pache Talon. It's a airbrush with a top located cup. This, this is a gravity fed. Instead of a suction type. This was just a few drops of paint with the rubbing alcohol to thin it. Now let me get this end over here. here <clears throat> and reach in and get it sprayed. I guess I'm holding the airbrush I guess about anywhere from four to six inches back from the subject so that I don't apply 
so that I don't apply too heavy coat of color. I definitely want the yellow tint gone, and I'm getting that right now. All right, time to refill. Pretty good. Not bad. Not too bloody shabby. I'm going to let this set a few minutes and then I'm going to seal it. I'm going to use the same matte sealer, acrylic sealer, to seal off the flocking nail. This will dry nice and flat. A matte finish will be a matte finish over this flocking. And I'm going to let this set. Uh, next, I think I'm going to have the owner of the deer come in, see how he likes this. If he likes this and I get his okay, that he's happy with it, uh, I'll do the other side. If he doesn't like it, it's going to come off. It's just that simple. Looks nice and full though, when you compare it to the other side. Well, thin the other side looks at the, in comparison at this point. The fullness of this looks really, really nice. Well, client came over, liked what he saw on the other side, and gave me the go-ahead to finish him up. So I'm applying the flocking to the opposite side of the antler rack, and then it will be painted. It'll be shaped and painted, and uh, we'll see the we'll see the little man when he's all completely finished. Later.